From 1981 to 2011, the Space Shuttle fleet ferried humankind to and from space. In this 30-year span, the shuttle program advanced human space exploration in multiple ways, setting the stage for us to go further and learn more in the decades to come. Let's explore this exciting period of space exploration as we blast off on a simulated shuttle mission of our own. The idea of the Space Shuttle program was to create reusable spacecrafts that would allow for more frequent trips to space. It was an idea that evolved from the first concepts to the design we know and love today. In the very first designs, we had a totally reusable vehicle. We had the orbiter, which is a rocket-propelled space plane, mounted on top of another very, very large rocket airplane. The idea being that we would launch that combination to a very high altitude, then the orbiter would fire and take it into orbit, while the bottom part would fly back to Earth be refurbished and would fly it like a normal commercial airplane. The problems of developing two brand new major rocket airplanes at the same time was both expensive and challenging from a schedule standpoint. We had been ultimately looked for other ways of getting the, the orbiter into orbit. Those other ways came in the form of mounting the space shuttle orbiter on top of an external tank, which held the fuel and oxidizer for the engines and two solid rocket boosters attached to either side. Of course, this concept proved to be equally challenging for the engineers working on the program, especially those here at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, who oversaw the development of the space shuttle's main engines, external tank, and solid rocket boosters. I, I put the shuttle and its challenges right behind landing a man on the moon. To be able to build a vehicle that you can launch into space and leave it up there several days and bring it back safely with all of the challenges of re-entry heating. And you realize when the thing comes back and lands like an airplane, it's an amazing vehicle. And that's been said by the astronauts. In total, there were five space shuttle orbiters that went to space. Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, Atlantis, and Endeavour. Here at Space Camp, we have three shuttle simulators, Discovery, Endeavour, and Enterprise. Enterprise being named for the first shuttle orbiter that was solely used for testing and training. And there was Pathfinder, the structural fit test article that we have here at the US Space and Rocket Center. Now let's meet the crew of our simulated shuttle mission. We have our commander, our pilot, and our flight controller. This mission today will give us a small taste of what it was like to launch and land a shuttle. While most shuttle missions had crews of five to eight astronauts, our mission today will mirror that of the first shuttle mission with only a commander and pilot on board. Numerous firsts for human spaceflight occurred in a cockpit like this one. The first American women in space. That was definitely an e-ticket. And the first American people of color all flew on a space shuttle. The shuttle also saw the oldest astronaut to date at 77 years old. In total, people representing 16 different countries flew on board the shuttle. This program really helped create the idea that anyone, regardless of where you come from, can be an astronaut. All crew members are ready for liftoff. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have booster ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of Endeavour and her crew. And the roll program is complete. All positions prepare for booster separation. And booster separation is successful. And Endeavour is on her way to orbit. Once in orbit, shuttle astronauts would start on their mission goals. Every shuttle mission had an objective. Many of the objectives were scientific in nature, studying the effects of microgravity on life from Earth. These experiments often furthered our understanding of space, informing future space missions. Of course, one of the purposes of the shuttle was to be a space truck, like big 18-wheelers on the highways and interstates, carrying large loads to space. It was thanks to the large lift capability of the space shuttle that the Earth's space agencies 
were able to launch satellites, orbital space observatories, and modules of the International Space Station. Many of the objects launched by shuttle forever changed space exploration and our understanding of the universe. The shuttle launched three of NASA's great observatories, the Hubble Space Telescope, the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory, and the Chandra X-ray Observatory. These observatories have allowed scientists on Earth to see deeper into space than ever before. Then there was perhaps the shuttle's greatest achievement, the International Space Station, furthering international cooperation in space. With both NASA and the Russian space agency, Roscosmos, now often working together, it is important to remember the role that space played in healing international relations post-Cold War. It was in 1995 when space shuttle Alanis made the ultimate breakthrough by docking with the Russian space station, Mir. The two agencies then worked with Canada, Japan, and the participating countries of the European Space Agency to build the International Space Station, starting in 1998. The shuttle program represented the best of humanity, even in the midst of tragedy. The loss of Challenger, Columbia, and their crews taught NASA how to make future space flights safer, ensuring that the lives of those lost were honored. We are ready for the orbit operation. When the final shuttle mission landed in 2011, many wondered what was next for NASA. After 30 years of some of the greatest scientific achievements in human history, it was time to prepare for the future. Well, I hope that historians will look back and say the space shuttle program was a stepping stone to Artemis, to Mars, because without the space shuttle, we wouldn't have built the space station. Without the space station, we wouldn't have learned the things that we needed to learn to go back to the moon, onto Mars. The current program being built, the Space Launch System, or SLS, is basically a shuttle. The core section of that is nothing but the external tank of the shell elongated. The solid rocket boosters are identical to the ones we used on shuttle, except we added one more segment. So we took advantage of all of that experience and all that technology in building the new vehicle. As humanity ventures further into space than ever before, the space shuttle program continues to remind us of what humans are capable of when we work together for the betterment of all humankind. Houston Endeavor, we have runway in sight. Final on 22. Everything looks good for a nominal landing. All right, Endeavour, we see that your landing gear is armed. Houston Endeavour, preparing to deploy landing gear. And now landing gear is deployed. Houston Endeavour, we have touchdown. We have confirmed touchdown. Houston Endeavour, we have nose gear touchdown. Endeavour has landed. We've had a successful mission. Welcome home. Houston Never, good to be home.